Release all that you think of as true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is? In order to firmly grasp the ideas presented, this is what you will need to know. Mainstream history, alternative histories like Atlantis, Lemuria, religious doctrines, the history of the occult and astrotheology, and the history of Rome and Christianity. There's been a lot of hype around the Tartaria conspiracy lately, and naturally there's a lot of confusion surrounding it. This video is really an attempt to develop the theory further. So, let's type in Tartaria in Google and see what we find. If you look on Wikipedia, the first result, it will show you a map from the 1800s. 1806. Keep that in mind for later. Now on this map, Tartary is just an Asiatic landmass, with city names that are based off Mongolian or Chinese. And where we see Russia and China, this is where Great Tartaria once existed. Let me show you a map from the 1600s. Let's notice how this is much different. We see Great Tartaria. And let's also notice the etymology change of all the cities. It's no longer a Mongolian empire. It's something else. Maybe pre-Russian? Also notice this. California is an island? Very interesting. Hmm. Wikipedia's explanation is it's a messaging error. Considering how high of an art cartography was, I find that hard to believe. As far-fetched as the following information may seem, I'm going to ask you just to follow down this path. Some people are saying that Tartaria is some kind of distraction. But from what? And is this theory any more of a distraction than Netflix and video games? Do you honestly feel satisfied with the history they teach you in schools and churches? I understand that most of you are believers of evolution and Big Bang Theory, but let's just explore a very different alternative to conventional history. I don't know everything about the past. I wasn't there. Nobody was as far as we know. Science likes to think it has all the answers, yet scientists still can't tell us how consciousness came to be, the connection between consciousness and matter, and why the hell we're all here. My goal is just to get the message out there to those who are genuinely curious about what's going on in this life. It's an understatement to say that humanity is lost. It's been pointed out by many historians that humanity is much older than we have been told. It's possible that civilization goes back millions of years, and we could be in some kind of cycle. What's clear is, advanced civilizations did exist in the past. If the monuments don't convince you, consider the myths and legends about gods having to deliver culture-important knowledge. There are hundreds of books written on Atlantis because it was a real place. The first story we really hear of this is from Plato, and in Critias, Critias is telling Socrates a story. He says, look Socrates, I got this crazy story that this wise sage named Solon told my great-grandfather, who was also named Critias. And my grandfather told me the story when I was 10. My grandfather started by saying how wise Solon was and that he was one of the wise seven sages. And he, Grandfather Critias, was going to some poetry youth meetup. And there, Solon, his teacher, is trying to tell a story about the greatest achievement that the Athenians ever did. But he says, and which ought to have been the most famous, but through the lapse of time and the destruction of the actors, it has not come down to us. I thought Socrates was an Athenian. Socrates is hearing this story from a young man named Critias. Critias is relaying a story he was told at age 10 by his grandfather, who when he was young was told this story by Sol on the Sage. Confusing, right? Well, it's meant to be. So Solon is now starting the story saying basically, Yes, we did something really great, but you don't know about it, young Critias, because these actors have been destroyed through a lapse of time. Okay, Solon continues telling Critias about a certain district in Egypt named Saïs, and how they had a great connection with the Athenians at this time. So Solon has taken a trip there, and he was received with great honor, and he started a conversation with the priest of Egypt on past human antiquity, or basically, ancient history. Now it says that Solon and none of the other Hellenes had nothing to say on the matter. And I think when Plato was writing this, he was implying that the priest didn't really want to talk about it that much. They were just listening to see what they knew. And at the end of the conversation, they didn't know anything. The Hellenes. They were clueless. So it goes on to say that on another occasion, Solon asked the priest again. And here is what I'm trying to show you guys. Solon was trying to pester the priest. It was like trying to show the priest his outstanding knowledge so the priest would talk about what they knew. Why? Because Solon knew that the Egyptians' priests were much, much wiser. So Solon tried to impress them, talking about his knowledge of Pharaonius, who is called the first man, and about Niob. Now I'm going to take a little break here because I want to show you something. 
What does this have to do with Tartaria? Well, let's look up Pharonius and look up Niobe. This is basic Greek mythology, just the old gods, right? Let me remind you what we're talking about here. Solon is trying to tell the priest of Egypt, hey, this is my esoteric knowledge and how it pertains to ancient history. Plato is literally showing you in play format that Solon was one of the sages of the Greeks who knew the secrets of their mythology and how it pertains to ancient cultures. Naya was the daughter of Tantalus, and according to Wikipedia, Tantalus was a Greek mythological figure most famous for his eternal punishment in Tartarus. I'm going to tell you what the secret of Pheronius and Niobe is, but let's take this one step at a time. Let's continue. So Solon tells the priest, yeah, look, here's the secrets of Pheronius and Niobe. And the Egyptian priest says, Oh Solon, Solon, you Hellenes are never anything but children, and there is not an old man among you. Solon in return asked him what he meant. I meant to say, he replied, that in mine you are all young. There is no old opinion handed among you by ancient tradition, nor any science which is hoary with age, and I will tell you why. There have been, and will be again, many destructions of mankind, arising out of many causes. The greatest have been brought about by the agencies of fire and water, and other lesser ones by innumerable other causes. There is a story, which even you have preserved, that once upon a time, Patheon, the son of Helios, having yoked the steeds in his father's chariot, because he was not able to drive them in the path of his father, burnt up all that was upon the earth, and himself was destroyed by a thunderbolt. Now this has the form of a myth, but really signifies a declination of the bodies moving in the heavens around the earth, and a great conflagration of things upon the earth, which recurs after long intervals. At such times, those who live upon the mountains and in dry, lofty places are more liable to destruction than those who dwell by rivers or on the seashore. And it's from this calamity, the Nile, who was our never-failing savior, delivers and preserves us. When, on the other hand, the gods purge the earth with the deluge of water, the survivors in your country are herdsmen and shepherds who dwell on the mountains. But those who, like you, live in cities are carried by the rivers into the sea. Whereas in this land, neither then nor at any time, does the water come down from above on the fields, having always a tendency to come up from below, for which reason traditions have preserved here are the most ancient. Notice how he's talking about two different cataclysmic events. He first is speaking about a myth that Solon's people have preserved, and then he states on the other hand when the gods purge the earth with a deluge of water. So we know there's a distinction there. He said many destructions. The myth goes Pathon, having yoked the steeds of his father's chariot, wasn't able to drive it in the path of his father. Could this mean that once Tartaria became a global empire and its motives didn't follow the same path as its predecessor Atlantis? And because he couldn't drive the path of the father or remain as true as was the once great Atlantis, the chariot burnt up all that was on earth and he himself, Tartaria, was destroyed by the thunderbolt. Could it be that Atlantis was destroyed because of natural progression through the ages, and perhaps Tartaria was destroyed for its evil motives, or its evil takeover? After the flood of Atlantis, this great nation tried to recreate Atlantis once again, only that it must have been forced so the civilization fell in cataclysm. The priest is saying, look, here, this tradition goes way back and everything we know and all the science that we practice are ancient, very ancient. We preserved our sciences. He called the Greeks children saying there was not one man among you. And remember, this is Plato, where we get all our sciences from. Now the priest said, the people who live on the mountains in dry and loft places were more liable to destruction when referring to Solon's myth. This is a very key factor. Okay, so that's the first understanding. There was an ancient, ancient advanced civilization in the past, and it was destroyed by water, and this is Atlantis. This is what we call pre-Diluvian, or pre-flood era. I want to start this off by just making sense of our timeline. If you're new to this stuff, then bear with me please, because I'm just going to explore out of our conventional timeline here. So we need to use certain terms and cultures to help us understand where we are before I can really make my final thesis. So we have this Egyptian priest, and he's talking about a pre-Diluvian age. So what was Solon talking about with the secrets of Pharonius and Niob and how it relates to antiquity? While researching for this thesis, I had an inkling to look up the Gaelic etymology for Tartar. 
Let's see what it says. Gaelic, Tartar, a great noise or confusion, that which is noisy, bustle, uproar, confusion. A Tartarian is a slang, bad word for a thief. Then get this, it also says that the word is often accounted for by the story of an Irish soldier who in some eastern battle had called out that he had caught a Tartar or a thief. This brings me to the Irish origins of civilization. We're told by authorized history that human civilization migrated east to west, but in this theory, a group from Atlantis survived and preserved the knowledge. Whether they knew the flood was coming, who knows for certain, but they landed in Ireland, and here somehow they survived. It's possible that this is the beginning of what we know as civilization, instead of east to west. I'm going to show you how the history of what we call the Irish, or the original inhabitants of Ireland, the preservers of the science of old, survived the flood, rebuilt their civilization, started traveling around the world to help the survivors, and bring their cultures back to civilization. Long later, those we know as the Greeks and Romans completely renamed these people, branded them as savages, and basically rewrote history for the masses. When we think Greek and Romans were the great civilizers of the world, the book, Irish Wisdom Preserved in Bible Impairments, by Connor McDarry. The audiobook is online, all you have to do is go give it a listen. Examine the evidence he presents and decide for yourself. In case you don't have enough time though, I'll try to break it down. Do you remember the Phoenicians? Yes, no, maybe? They conveniently skipped over them in high school, but they were a big deal. In mainstream history, their language was the basis of the Greek culture, and they sailed all over the coast of Africa, all the way to Britain. They were the sea explorers with advanced ship. However, when you look up in the history book, you'll get pictures of very primitive, unintelligent people. Baloney. Phoenician was a cover name, and you're going to see this happen a lot throughout history at the hands of the Greeks and the Romans. They simply renamed the Irish Phoenician, and they were all but forgotten. You can find more connections to the Celts to the Phoenicians based on their language here on the website simply called Phoenicia.org. Connor McDarry states, in their great missionary pilgrimage, they circled the globe in order to give religion and knowledge of God to the different races of mankind. They also established priesthoods and gave alphabets to the races who were unenlightened in such matters up until that time. Ireland is the country in which the arts and the sciences were first discovered and developed. To this country, the Greeks supplied the term Oigia, a term which was never given to but the very ancient, and it's from the Irish the Aryans, that the Greeks traced their descent. In modern times, the term Aryan has been misused. It was never meant to be used for race. The Irish passed along the knowledge as spiritual guides, Arya meaning of higher class or status. This is where we get Indo-Aryan where the Irish landed and must have shared this information with the Indus Valley culture. The evidence suggests that they were the spiritual teachers of the ancient world, after the flood. This is why all religions are based on astrotheology. We have some worship all over the world like the Maya, Aztec, Native American, Sumerian, Babylonian, Chinese, Japanese, Celtic, Turkish, and it goes on and on. The term Arya is derived from Aries, the first sign of the zodiac, the ram. The symbolism of the ram is the knowledge of God, or the El. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai, he was horned, meaning that he had gained knowledge. Even Michelangelo represents this in his statue of Moses. The word pyramid, pi ra made, means paternal power of the ram. In Egyptian culture, many pharaohs took on the name of Rama or Ramses to show their knowledge of God. In Christianity, it's been altered to be lamb instead of God, yet the symbolism of the ram and its meaning is deeply ingrained into nearly all world religions. Connor McDarry states, To the Irish Magi, we owe the discovery of fire and the common grains, which they developed from the grasses. They were the first people to practice agriculture. They invented the common tools of workmanship, which have come down to us practically unchanged from those ancient times. There is no mistaking the monuments left by the Irish, who were once the rulers and masters of the whole earth. Their rule embraced all countries. It was worldwide. Ireland was the first mistress of the seas, and it was the first and only worldwide empire which has ever been known, for it was a spiritual empire. I'm going to dig deeper into Egypt now. And yes, I realize there's so many theories out there on who really were the inhabitants. I can't say I know for certain. All I can do is place the pieces I have found and gather feedback and more information. I'm sure there's more than meets the eye, but the info's out there. I know I'm not the only one interested in what really happened in humanity's past. From Gaelic Etymology 
Egypt signifies the land of Copt or the Coptic land. Others derive it from Am and the yurt of black vulture. The color of the bird being, according to them, characteristic of the soil or of its inhabitants. Let's go back to the story of Critias in Egypt. So Solon is in Sais and he's talking to one of the priests. Now to make things a little clearer, let me explain. The sage and the civilization of Egypt at the time was most likely of a darker complexion. We don't know for certain, but it's apparent to me that Solon was light-skinned, or what we're told, Aryan, but he wasn't really now, was he? He was many generations after the first race of man that landed in Ireland after the flood and redistributed knowledge to mankind throughout the world. And that is what the priest was talking about. He was telling Solon about his people, the Irish, or the Chaldeans, Phoenicians, Babylonians, and of the many names they were called. According to the maps in the 1600s, the biggest empire was the Great Tartaria Empire. I'm not sure what culture this was. I'm not saying this is an Irish culture. I'm just bridging the gaps so that we can understand why Tartar is associated with Irish etymology and how it came to be. In Greek mythology, Nile was a myth of Tartary and its destruction. And Solon thought that Phoronius from Argos and Tartary was where man hence came. Phoronius must be a king who had survived the Tartarian disaster and redistributed knowledge again, but this time east to west. This is why mainstream history were taught this, because that is what the Greeks thought, that is what Plato wrote. Well, I'm going to take a guess and say that Plato was a made-up figure, but we'll get to that. The priest was unimpressed with Solon, because the Hellenes, or the Greeks, stole all this knowledge. They had no preserved knowledge. They stole knowledge, renamed it, and took it for themselves. Not only that, but Solon didn't even know where his own people came from. The priest is referring to the West, in Europe, in Ireland, right after the Flood, way before the empires of Great Tartaria. The Irish were responsible for preserving music, the secret of sound vibration, language, the occult, tarot, which the Jews turned into Kabbalah, advanced architecture, and stone megaliths, geometry, math, you name it, all the sciences. Astrotheology is the key. That is the answer why all spiritual religions have similar philosophies toward the material world. Civilization didn't just start randomly in the Middle East. Maybe with this alternative view, it can explain how similar traditions are present all around the world. Dances, fashion, spirituality, cooking, natural medicine, magic, and architecture. After some time, this became a global empire, with Great Tartaria established in the East, modern day Russia. It isn't clear at this time whether Tartaria at its prime was controlled by Irish or had been hijacked and that deliberate misuse of the great empire were rewarded with fire and thunder. If this is even close to true, is it possible that we may have missing time? I mean after all, our calendar and time is based on astrology and then finally determined and made law by the civilizers of society. It's really not crazy to assume that time has been constructed by these officials that took over the old empire, and I'm talking after flood. There's so much confusion because there's been multiple cataclysms on this earth, and that has been forgotten by the human race. I'm not talking floods, I'm talking earthquakes and things falling from the sky and who knows what else. It's not just stories in this last global empire, whatever it was called, Irish, the Tartars, or the confusion, or the thieves, was destroyed and stolen by the Greeks slash Romans, and they conquered and cursed these nations forever by destroying their lands and rewriting their etymology. The word phony being derived from Phoenician is just one example. I have reason to assume that there was a great culture in America, and this will be further proven as we go on, but let's look at these maps again. I want to show you these mountains right by Salt Lake City, or, or where it's supposed to be. Now, this is a lake that isn't here now, it's extremely large, and I can imagine that it was very beautiful. This was at the top of a mountain, and it must be pretty high in elevation. And so it flowed out the strait into the Pacific. And so now remember what the priest said about these people who lived on the mountains. He said that they perished and I'm about to tell you why. Because when the earthquakes come and the comets come and the floods come, they are the worst places to be. Because water flows down from extreme heights, mixes with the soil and creates a massive river of solid mass. This is likely what occurred. Solon's myth, Pheronius, was talking about the destruction of Tartary. There was some type of cataclysm, and it could have been all over the world. In Asia, North America, it was big. 
There's a lot of evidence to show that this happened literally in the 1800s. I know it sounds crazy, but I, what I'm about to say is insane, but trust me and I'll walk you through it. To make it short, Tartary was destroyed somewhere between 300, 400 years ago? It could be longer, shorter, I mean, I don't know. But it was through some world-breaking event that caused earthquakes, mud floods all over the world, and this was due to some comet that was summoned through black magic by some evil group. They shook the world up, and people were down and distraught. And remember, this is not the flood of the Bible, this is after. And that is why this theory is so important right now. We truly need to be questioning who we are, what happened in our history, and what's going on here. Well, let's start with the Romans and the Jews. And please, if you're Roman or Jewish, don't take offense to this. I know for a fact that, you know, nowadays, everybody has a really good heart and it's kind of hard to really just terminalize it with just one word, but I'm sure you've done your research and when we look into history and history gets dark, no other culture or race has been kicked out of more countries than the Jews from the history that we've been handed down and there's a really dark history here guys and I can't really go into it in this channel but it does explain so much the Jews took the knowledge of the Irish and they basically were a cult of the original knowledge of the Druids that's the Kabbalah it's the original tarot and the symbols that came from the Aryan priest of the global world empire after the flood they took this knowledge, started practicing dark black magic, and basically, through sacrifice and horrible religious ideologies, the ancient Jews warped and perverted the knowledge of the Irish. Now, I don't know if black magic was used in the destruction of Tartary or not, but you tell me what happened. Tartaria could have been filled with peaceful people, because after the fight, they could have been easily subdued by the Roman soldiers. The Romans were the true Tartarians. They were the thieves. What we know as Tartaria is but a lie. The Romans and the Greeks named it using the language of the Gauls. Why? Well, we need to look into an important figure known as Josephus and how he influenced Rome. On Wikipedia, if you search Flavius Josephus, it says, During the First Jewish-Roman War, the Romans were battling the Jewish forces in Galilee. Now, Galilee is just one connection, even though it is in Israel. However, let's just reestablish this connection. So what's happening? Before Christianity had begun, the Romans had their last and longest battle with the Druids. Well, the Druids were the Jews who hijacked the teachings of the Gomorites and stole it for their own perverted ways, became corrupt, and started sacrificing. That is why we hear about this happening in Carthage and Rome to please Jupiter. And this gets dark, but let's go on. The Gomorites were the Irish people, and this must have happened long after Tartary had been destroyed. So what is going on? All this knowledge that we have is just knowledge from the age after the catastrophe of Tartary, or the story of Tantalus, the father of Niobe. But here's the key to understanding this whole conspiracy. This was not Atlantis. I'm proving this through Plato. Plato could have been made up. It's entirely possible that the Greek or Roman civilizations never existed, and whatever empire was the culprit behind the deliberate destruction of Tartaria, or if it was just an accident, but whatever happened, someone rewrote history after this happened. History is always written by the winners. When two cultures clash, the loser is obliterated and the winner writes the history books. Books which glorify their own cause and disparage the conquered foe. As Napoleon once said, what is history but a fable agreed upon? Dan Brown, The Da Vinci Code. Let's recap. There was a flood, a deluge. The whole world went dark and was lost. The Irish civilization were the ones who reserved the knowledge from Atlantis. They distributed it throughout the world, and there was a worldwide global civilization. This is when Tartary existed. A group or empire or coal or whatever you want to call it, Rome, came to power through evil, black magic, with a plan to create a new world order. Cataclysm strikes all over the world. The greatest of all empires is destroyed, Great Tartaria, in which the Greeks wrote myths about. This evil group rises, takes over. History is rewritten, and all ancient history is systematically erased by these power-hungry peoples, whoever they were. All the remaining empires and people were forced to join or be killed. This gives me a better position to assert more theories. Now, 
If this is so, we need to establish some sort of timeline because what's going on? The first clue is in old 1600 maps. There's an I before the 600. Once you look into that and then you look at the records of the Dust Each India Company, they have the same thing. The best way I can explain this whole thing is that the 1600 ones are Spanish or European. They are all made from the European Union. And where did they get their source maps? Okay, I'm going to get it theoretical, but I feel as if I have to start somewhere with really figuring out what happened. What we know is the Renaissance, the European Union forming up their Rome from Germany and then to Spain, Britain, etc. It's a fabrication. It's well known these days that Shakespeare was just a character. How much more of our history is full of these fictional personas? And shoot, if he isn't real, then maybe we should all just stop acting like we know it all because with all these unsolved mysteries in the world, it really goes to show how little we understand. Before Tartary was destroyed, remember, I said global. So they were in Europe, and that's why you see crazy architecture that all looks similar with unique varieties, but it's all the same idea all over Asia and Europe and North America. All we know is the Greeks or Romans, if they even existed, were a people who walked into the cities of a once great nation and tried to scramble what they could from the remainders and dominated the remaining victors of the cataclysm. One question that bothers me, and I would appreciate any input or ideas, is why were the remaining survivors of this great empire not be able to strike back? It must have been targeted or something beyond belief happened that we can't really understand today with our modern minds. Now in part 2, I'm going to go in what happened with North America. Was there a great empire where the Grand Canyon was located? More proof for the mud flood with buildings underground and strange architectures in big cities. I know that was a lot of info, but we really felt compelled to try and bridge this Tartaria mystery with astrotheology and the story of Irish civilization. There's still a lot of interesting stuff that we didn't have time to mention, so stay tuned for more videos. Like and subscribe if you feel inclined. Until next time. Release all that you think of as true. Relax the mind and ask the question. Do I truly understand what this reality is?